Hello, my families. This week on Community Chat, Pagan Dars PLC, truck wreck and brain injury lawyers, is speaking with Anya Lear, owner of the Lear Immigration Law Firm. Anya's passion for immigration law is rooted in her own story of being born and raised in Moscow and coming to the United States for college. She is intimately familiar with the struggles surrounding visas, deportation, naturalization. Anya is a phenomenal resource for the community and seeks to share as much information as she can for those that are looking for answers. Anna is here to tell us about her journey starting the Lear Immigration Law Group, what it is like to be a client of hers, and an important training tidbit for the community. Welcome, Anna. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you so much, Caitlin, for having me. Really appreciate that. Well, I'm so glad to have you here because I know you as a friend and I have heard your story. And it's a really great story because unlike most immigration law firms, you intimately know what people are going through because you yourself went through this process. So you really stand out in that in that way. Um, and I wanted you to share that um, journey with the community. So if you don't mind, I would love for you to share that really interesting story about coming to the U.S. and starting the Lear Immigration Law Firm. Yeah. And before I jump in, I just want to say, Caitlin, I'm, um, I, I really admire how much you've done and the, the community you're growing, you know, with uh, community talks. Um, I think it's wonderful. And I love the energy you bring when you interview the guests. Oh, thank you so much. And I'm very excited for this one because I think people are going to learn a lot that they may not know about immigration law and, and yeah. an important re resource to have for anybody that they may need this information. Um, yeah. So I'm forward to hearing your story. Yeah, of course. Um, um, so my story is, you know, is very personal. Um, I, as as you mentioned, I, um, you know, it was a long road to becoming, um, you know, immigration attorney and starting my own practice. Um, allows me to connect with my clients. Obviously, um, I was born in um, in Moscow, Russia, uh, and I came here over 20 years ago when I was pretty young. Um, and it, it wasn't always easy. You know, it was, you know, I had struggles. But um, at some point, I was working for uh, an international adoption agency um, here in U.S., but um, we were helping um, American families adopt uh, children from orphanages uh, from former uh, Soviet republics, uh, you know, Russia, Ukraine, Kazakhstan. And um, I really um, enjoyed um, helping families and, you know, seeing these children uh, finding families. Um, and um, it was also at the same time very emotionally difficult uh, job, um, but very re rewarding. And I, I, I wanted to do more. And when, when I left that job, I, I was fulfilling that, you know, there's something more I can do. And that kind of brought me to the law school. Um, and, um, I wanted to do human rights, adoptions and immigration, kind of my mix of things. Um, after law school, I um, clerked for a judge, um, and then I got my job in immigration. Um, in, I was working for an immigration law firm uh, here in Denver, and um, I really enjoyed that. Um, then I tried to do something different. Um, I worked for um, another law firm doing business and oil and gas litigation. Uh, completely different, um, trying myself out. But um, in uh, March of 2021, I kind of, uh, my world turned upside down. I got devastating news, but I was diagnosed with uh, early stages of breast cancer. And, um, you know, everything changed overnight. And I, um, after, you know, the whole, you know, treatment, you know, everything was um, kind of, um known and um you know i i was kind of in a better place and it's going to be okay i i realized you know literally life is way too short for me to do something i'm not passionate about so and that's how i i kind of uh st that's how i started my my um journey to um starting my own law firm um uh, in immigration um i felt you know, a lot of connection with immigration. I worked in it before. I went through the process myself. And and, and so I kind of uh, 
you know, it, it was kind of, a, you know, this, this is it, this is what I want to do. And I want to do it uh, kind of um, under my conditions on my own terms and uh, building my own practice. So um, I en really enjoy intellectual challenge uh, because it's just, it changes all the time, the immigration field. And um, it's, um, there's some very difficult problems sometimes um, figuring out strategies. But the the main thing is, um, you know, connections with my clients. That's what I appreciate the most and literally making difference in their lives. Um, I do mostly family-based immigration. Um, when somebody is uh, petitioning for their family member um, and um, I also do asylum and uh, humanitarian based uh, type of uh, cases. Um, and I also uh, do um, removal defense. Uh, you know, this is the um, immigration court proceedings where you're in front of the judge, immigration judge trying to decide whether you're going to stay or leave uh, the country. Um, after the um, Russian-Ukrainian war started in uh, last year, early last year, um, I um, wanted to do something about it, having, you know, uh, connection to uh, that conflict. And um, I was able to volunteer um, with um, different organizations and be on some committees uh, trying to help victims of that war on both sides. Um, and um, so that was a uh, you know, brought me closer to the Russian speaking community, which is a big pro part of my practice. Um, and again, I, I, I love, um, you know, working for myself and uh, working on, um, you know, wearing different hats and, um, you know, being marketing specialist one day and then, um, you know, uh, being back to being an attorney the other day and, you know, improving that side of things as well. So it's just, there's just, it's very exciting to me. Um, I'm very happy at the place where I'm at. And um, I just, I, I only see myself doing this for a very long time. Well, I think that's great because you bring so much aspect to this. Like one, you are a small business owner, which is fantastic because a lot of the clients potentially that you're talking to are in that same boat. Um, another thing is that you being a survivor, you realizing you want to do what's passionate to you. You also encounter those types of people that are just adamant that they want to be naturalized. They're adamant that they want to be citizens and they'll do anything for it. It's a passion for them. And that's what they want. And so we've talked about a lot about that, how your background just ties into to your clients. And so one of the big things that's interesting is, you know, there are other immigration law firms out there. Mm -hmm. Why choose yours? What is the actual client experience? What happens when they call your law firm? What happens when they um, mm -hmm. obtain you as their counsel? What is the experience of being a client at the Lear Immigration Law Firm? Yeah, so I think the first thing that um, I want them to know um, is that I would be their compassionate advocate. I would be, uh, I do care for them as people and I care for their case. Um, you know, knowing that somebody is dedicated, uh, diligent, uh, and pays attention to details. Um, someone who is uh, reachable, uh, approachable, easy to communicate with. Um, someone you can connect with because they've been through the same immigration journey previously. Um, I start, um, uh, you know, my uh, kind of first interaction with potential clients by asking them to schedule um, an hour long consultation with me, very comprehensive uh, to get all the information um, that may affect their uh, options. And um, in the immigration field, one little fact, and it changes the trajectory of the whole case, if not life uh, sometimes. So, um, and I, strive to bring lots of value in that consultation i'm um because this is where you know you lay out their options um, you discuss different avenues and what will happen under what you know if this happens and that happens and 
Um, so that that's you know that my goal is to um, have a lot bring a lot of value so that even if they end up not um, you know working with me or not working with any attorney immigration attorney they, they at least kind of have a blueprint of their case and you know they, they know kind of what's going on and um, um, if they choose to navigate themselves it's just you know very very hard normally. Um, after, um, clients start working with me, um, I, um, I remain their attorney. I remain the person who would be, um, actually doing work on their case. Um, I would be contacting them. I would be responding to their emails and phone calls. Um, unlike many other law firms, uh, where the uh, clients passed on to immigration law firms, where clients passed on to uh, paralegals and, and legal assistants and other staff members. Um, I mean, I would be the one who would be working on that case. And um, so that's, that's I, uh, you know, kind of a, um, what makes me a little bit different um, in many ways. I think that's fantastic. And then some of the people that are listening to this, one may need your services. Somebody listening may say, I never need those services, but they should know about it because they may interact with someone that does and you would be a great resource. So I'd love to have a training tidbit that you can share with the community that all of us could just understand and, and hold on to in case it becomes relevant for either our own lives or somebody that we might be. Yeah, I was thinking about this one and then I... I I think it's very simple. My my kind of like a message is very simple. Um, don't underestimate the value of competent um, legal representation with your immigration case. This is that simple. Um, I think a lot of people think that um, they can do it themselves. They uh, think that immigration is about uh, filling out a form and sending that in and magic happens. And many times it does not work like that. Um, with years, the even immigration forms uh, became um, longer, more complicated. They, they constantly adding more questions that are very nuanced. Um, and, um, you know, you're answering those questions under oath, um, under penalty of perjury. And um, just to give you an example, um, the uh, adjustment of status application, which is like the main application to apply for a green card, um, is uh, 20 pages long, and the instructions for that form are 44 pages long. Oh, wow. So if, if, you know, and this is just the form kind of aspect of it. There are so many other things. Um, you know, and if, if somebody's in remote proceedings and in immigration court, you know, it's especially a lot of people don't speak, you know, um, English, uh, especially the legal portion of it uh, is, you know, it, it becomes very, very difficult when you try to do it yourself. Um, a lot of people also concerned about uh, financial aspect of it, and it's very understandable because people coming, you know, um, some of them recent arrivals, still building their, uh, you know, life, uh, starting uh, anew, uh, but um, what if people don't realize is there are lots of options available that, um, uh, you know, for example, the non there are nonprofit organiza organizations that provide um, immigration loans specifically to for immigration legal fees and filing fees, and um, there are also the um, uh, payment plans available. Um, so this is something to keep in mind. Um, one thing I wanted to warn about um, the listeners is that um, um, to stay away from uh, um, non-attorneys who are trying to assist with them with their case. In, in many immigrant communities, they're known as notaries or notarios in Spanish-speaking communities, and they represent themselves as, as, as if they would help in uh, they would save them money, and I just heard so many horror stories about uh, people's cases get so screwed up, and um, you know, people just sometimes under the advice of Ontario leave the country and never be able to come back. It's is just um, horrifying stories. So this is very dangerous, and um, you know, in it might save 
some money in the short run, but they'll pay dearly in many other ways and in the long run. I think that's fantastic advice. Um, and I think consulting with an attorney that uh, understands this, they've been through it themselves, but also knows the consequences. Um, and a lot of times, as I know uh, what you do is kind of getting people out of problems that stem mm -hmm. from them doing applications themselves um, or consulting with a attorney that was not qualified. So I think it's fantastic what you do for the community. I'll include all your contact information in the show notes. And so I really appreciate you, Anna, for being on here today. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate that, Caitlin. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.